Okay, in this video, we are going to start talking about Calc AB notes 24, um, which is all about differential equations. And as it says in the title, they're mostly going to be separable differential equations. And so we may not even know what that means yet, um, but that's what most of them are going to be. You've been looking at differential equations as long as you've been taking derivatives. When you take a derivative, so if you start off with like, uh, I don't know, y equals cosine of 2x, right? Then you take the derivative of that and you're, you're going to get dy dx. So the rate of change of y with respect to x is negative 2 sine of 2x. This is a differential equation because it has a derivative in it. That's all it really is. So we've been looking at them forever. Uh, we've actually already solved a lot of them because we've done antiderivatives. We've done integrals. Um, so let's take a look at these. So we'll solve these differential equations. So you can solve these pretty much by observation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just demonstrate what um, separation of variables is, which is what we do with a separable differential equation. So here we go. So, you know, you look at this, you instantly solve it, right? Y is equal to e to the x plus c, and then you solve for c. Let's make it a little more complicated for no apparent reason to begin with. So I'm going to change this to dy dx is e to the x. Okay, now I'm going to separate. So everything with a y, which is only dy, is going to stay on the left. Everything with an x, including dx, is going to go to the right. So this is going to become dy is e to the x dx. It's as if I've multiplied both sides by dx. I didn't really do that. Um, there's like this whole philosophical debate on what you're really doing. You can think of it as multiplying both sides by dx. It's not going to hurt anybody. Um, and as you go on in your, your mathematical career, you might run into someone who tries to convince you otherwise, but like, uh, it always works. So go with it. That's what I do. That's how I think of it. Um, so we're going to do this. We're going to integrate both sides. Now, what is the integral of dy? So dy is telling you that the variable on this side is y. So if I integrate one in this case, cause it's one dy, if I integrate one, instead of getting X, I get y. So on this side, I'll get y. There is a plus c, but what we're going to do is we're going to save the plus c and put all of our plus c on the side with the um, independent variable, which is x. You could tell x is independent because of dy dx from the denominator kind of thing there. dx, x is the independent variable. So on this side, we'll get e to the x plus c. So this is taking forever for something that we could have done just by kind of like observation which is fine. Like sometimes you got to go like way back to go forward. It's basically what we're doing here. Um, so now I'm going to use my initial condition. So initial condition is the thing that allows you to solve for C. That's all an initial condition is. So here we're going to have two is equal to E to the first plus C. So C is kind of weird. C is uh, two minus E. And that means that if we combine uh, this, with this, we now know that y is equal to e to the x plus 2 and minus e. And that's it. We solved the differential equation. We used what's called separation of variables. Uh, it's kind of weird. Uh, it's actually not that weird. It's, it's really like a straightforward thing. You just have to kind of get used to it. And these are very simple problems. Like there's not really a need to do it on these. But if you get into the habit here, it's a little better. Like here, you look at this and you're like, oh, y is equal to 1 third x cubed plus 3x plus c. Then we solve for c. I'm going to illustrate how you use this technique, though. So I'm going to make it dy is the quantity because everything on this side gets a dx. So the quantity x cubed plus, three, uh, sorry, x squared plus 3 and dx. Then we throw in our integral signs. Uh, on the left-hand side, we're integrating dy. So we're going to get back a y. And then, so like think to yourself on the left-hand side, what's the derivative of y with respect to y? It's one. That's why we integrate one dy and we get back y. There could be a plus c over there. We save it and put it all on the side with um, the x's. So here, one third x cubed plus three x. Now we do plus c. We use our initial condition to solve for c. And you can see in this case, uh, c is just gonna be eight. And then we can write our final answer. So our final answer here is going to be 1 third x cubed plus 3x plus 8. And we solved it, OK? So these are problems that we could have solved uh, probably a long, long time ago. But 
I wanted to make sure that we kind of understood what was going on here. Differential equation, an equation with a derivative in it. So it might be y prime, it could be dy dx. Could be really any representation of a derivative. Um, that's a differential equation. And then we can use this technique of separation of variables. So we're gonna do a lot more of those, so don't worry about it yet. If you found that a little tricky, we're gonna go back and we're gonna, we're gonna do more. Uh, another thing that we do, so we learn to solve, uh, you know, we, we can solve by, by looking at it and just thinking we know how to do it. We can do u substitutions, we can uh, reverse the power rule. Uh, we're gonna learn this separation of variables. There's a lot of methods for these, and some of them we're not gonna really know how to do. Uh, but one of the things we can do is always verify a solution. Verifying a solution is different from solving because you're just given the solution. So let's take a look at this. So I wanna verify that the function is a solution to the given differential equation. So I wanna show that if this is true. So if this is true, then this is true. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to erase those so that I don't have them in the way. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to do substitution. So look at the differential equation. It's y dy dx um, plus 4. It's like I forgot how to read in the middle of reading that. It's y dy dx plus 4x equals 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do substitution. So I already know that uh, y is equal to this, and in the differential equation, there's a y. Now, I need something that I can substitute for dy dx, but if I know what y is, I can find dy dx, so I'm gonna actually do that. So over here, I'm gonna say that dy dx is, um, all right, so it's one half the thing to the negative one half times negative eight x, so the negative eight, and the one half give you just negative four x, and I'm gonna write it as over 12 minus four x squared. So I use the chain rule there. Um, you could work, you could like pause and work it out, but that's what it's gonna work out to. So now I can substitute this, whoops. All right, that didn't work. I can substitute this for dy dx. So I'm making those two substitutions and then I'm gonna add four X and hopefully get zero. If I do, then this is a solution. If I don't, then something went wrong somewhere. Hopefully nothing went wrong. So first we're gonna have, uh, we substitute for Y, so 12 minus four X squared. Now we substitute for dy dx, so minus four X over radical 12 minus four X squared. Then we add four X because we're just supposed to, and then it equals zero. And you can see that this will definitely equal zero um, because you know this and this cancel. And so we just end up with negative four X plus four X, which equals zero. So zero equals zero, check. So it's definitely a solution. If we had gotten like one equals zero, then it wouldn't have been a solution. Uh, and then we probably would have just gone back and checked our derivative because that was like by far uh, the diciest part of this. Uh, how about this? So we want to check that uh, y equals e to the x times sine of 2x is, is a solution to y double prime minus 2y prime plus 5y equals 0. What do you think the hardest part of this is going to be? Uh, if you said finding the second derivative correctly, you're probably right, because this is a product. So we're going to use product rule. And then uh, we'll probably need the product rule to find the second derivative. Like It's going to be a lot. So uh, we already have a y that we can sub for. So let's see, we, we're gonna need to sub for this, which we don't have it right now. Uh, we're gonna need this, which we don't have right now. And we're also gonna need, what's the third color I wanna use here? We also need this, which we have. So this is this. So, so far we're, we're good with that one. All right, let's find y prime. So y prime is uh, first, the derivative of the second is gonna be two cosine of two x plus the second, which is e to the x, times the derivative, oh, sorry. The second is uh, sine of 2x, but I'd like to write just e to the x times sine of 2x, so that's, that's why I was thinking that. So I'm gonna write uh, this. So second derivative of first works out to this. All right, when you're doing these sorts of problems, it almost always benefits you to simplify. So I'm gonna factor and say it's two cosine of 2x, plus sine of 2x. 
Okay. So that's my Y, I, I believe that that is my Y prime. Uh, when this doesn't go well, I'm gonna go back and check that. So Y prime, is that the right color? That is not the right color. What color are you? Uh, maybe you're this color. Yeah, that's the right color. Okay, so we're gonna make that substitution. And then I need Y double prime. So here we go, Y double prime. Just gonna use a product rule on Y prime. So it's first, the derivative of the second. So the derivative of two cosine of two X is negative four sine of two X. Um, the derivative of sine of two X is gonna be plus two cosine of two X. Okay, so that's first derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first is just e to the X. So I'm gonna just write that in again. And then second was two cosine of two X plus sine of 2x. I feel like I should clean this up because uh, it's pretty messy. So say y double prime is. All right, so what do we have here? We have things that have cosines of 2x and things that have sines of 2x. So how much of each of those do we have though? We have uh, e to the x. So let's just do sin the sine of 2x's. There's a, a negative 4. Maybe I'll use um, I'll underline. So we have a, a negative four and it's times e to the x. Then we have a positive one. So negative three overall, negative three e to the x sine of two x. I can't get over like when I'm in the like real world, I never use uh, highlighters. I never really use multiple colors when I'm writing by hand. On the whiteboard, I always do if I have them available. Uh, but it like it's such a different, better note taking experience. Highly recommended. Um, all right, cosine of two x things. So we got uh, two of them, and then we have another two of them. So I think overall we have four of those. So plus four e to the x cosine of two x. All right, so we're going to try to substitute this. Uh, what color do we use for that? I think this color. So this is going to substitute in there. Is it the same color? Yeah. Okay, so let's do it. So we'll have a uh, good grief. This is gonna be crazy. All right, so I'm gonna put it in parentheses, I guess. Negative three e to the x sine of two x. So this is y double prime getting subbed in. E to the x cosine of two x. Okay, so now it's minus two y primes. So I'm gonna like expand that as I go. So it's gonna be minus two y primes. So it's minus, uh, what the heck? Minus two y primes. So negative two e to the x times two cosine. So minus four e to the x cosine of two x. And then it's minus two e to the x sine of two x. Minus two e to the x sine of two x. Okay, and then I'm supposed to add five of the original y, which is e to the x sine of two x. So that's plus five e to the x sine of two x, which I'm kind of like cramming this all in here now. All right, let's go searching for things again. So maybe I'll, um, what am I gonna do? I don't know, I'm gonna underline. So I just need like a color to do that in. All right, let's search for um, the cosine things. So. We have plus four of them, minus four of them at zero. Okay, that's good because there aren't supposed to be any. So uh, that feels feels like we're on the right track. Uh, then we have minus three, minus two is minus five of those, and then plus five of those. So this whole thing, actually, we get zero equals zero. Check. We verified the solution. It's not that fun. Um, but it's really, really satisfying. And also like, you know, you gotta be really neat and organized. And uh, so in doing this, I think we got to practice being neat and organized. I'm gonna like wrap this up here. I know there's not a lot to go on this page, but like, I, uh, it, it's not gonna be great in the next problem. Uh, so I'm gonna stop here. And we kind of talked about separation of variables. We didn't really get into it yet. We definitely talked about verifying solutions. This is something you have to do on the multiple choice section, the AP exam sometimes. And I don't know if there's supposed to be a faster way to do it um, because those questions always seem weird to me where like, you know, you potentially would have to check uh, like for which of the following differential equations is Y equals E to the X sine of two X 
a solution. Like you'd have to find the derivative, sub them in. Like, I don't know what they're really looking for there, but you definitely need to do this sometimes. Um, so this should be a very helpful skill to develop as you go through. So I'm gonna end this here, come back in the next video and finish this page and see where we go from there. So uh, see you in the next one.